Thank you very much. Um, it's recording, we're all good. Uh, my name's Louis. Uh, I, uh, I wear many hats. Uh, I've been a developer for quite a long time. Uh, about four years ago, I got, or five years ago, I got into security and I do a fair bit there. We're doing training for like eight or nine years now. And recently I joined a, a, a startup as their CTO, which is a fancy title for uh, four people who are on the technical one. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, you're going to hear more about it next year I imagine. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? We're talking about Git. This is how to Git good. It's a great, uh, great alliteration, terrible grammar. Uh, we're going to be talking about Git foundations. I'm a big believer in understanding the foundations of something so you can Google it correctly. Huge believer in this. So this is, this is Git foundations, also known as how do I learn this damn thing. We've got an intermediate Git which is how does this scale past one person uh, and then we've got organized git flows which is oh this is how this works mind explode crazy dancing um, so this is what we're going to be talking about for the next half an hour so a quick show of hands uh, first uh, people who have hands raise them please that's good start fantastic that's everyone uh, anyone who has uh, who prefers a git gui hands up git guis half the room more than half the room okay uh, anyone uh, IDE based Xcode, they prefer Xcode because it's awesome. The one a half a person, okay, that's an interesting statistic. Any command line purists in the room? Yeah, okay, about 40%, 35%. Uh, who here is a Git expert? Okay, we've got two. So more people are Git experts than Xcode users. <laughs> okay, that's good. Nice to know at an Apple developer conference. And then who, last one, who kind of hopes and prays that Git usage doesn't go into a merge error? Now again, we've got people, basically people with hands. All right, cool, fantastic. So let's look at Git foundation. So I really strongly believe in sort of the fundamental looking at sort of how Git works. So first step, remove GitHub from the brain. Are we ready? Gone. It's not, okay, GitHub is not Git, all right? GitHub is amazing, I love it, but it is a remote repo. We're going to be talking about Git, okay? We're going to be pushing stuff to remote repos later. Let's talk about Git. So what is it? So Git is a version control system for tracking changes in computer files. Now, I said computer files. This could be images, not just code. It could be images. It could be a PhD. You know, there's a whole range of things you can, you can do version control for. Uh, it is a distributed revision control system aimed at speed, data, integra uh, data integrity, support for distributed non-linear workflows. That sentence basically means uh, it's uh, fast, it works well, and it handles weird. And if there's one thing we've learnt from our talk last night with Paul, we want our systems to handle weird. It needs to do that, and Git does that really well. It does weird well. Uh, so who is Git? Uh, written by Linus Torvald, who's the founder of Linux, for the development of Linux kernel. There's some history there I'm not gonna go into, but it is open source, and it is used by pretty much anyone who makes software. Anyone who, uses, anyone who writes software pretty much uses Git these days. Why is Git? Um, so Git records a snapshot of every commit you make. If you stuff something up, you can go back in time and go to fix it. That's amazing. We could, we could really use that from time to time. Uh, why else is Git? It makes work with multiple people manageable. I can't imagine doing this without uh, some sort of version, uh, version uh, software. Or working with multiple versions of yourself, where you have all the different features you want to do and all the bug fixes at the same time. Having Git is really handy. Ah, uh, uh, handy, uh, I like that one. Did you, did you marvel at my joke? No, uh, these are just getting better. They're getting better. Um, so why else is Git? So older solutions are very centralized. Uh, they so parallel work was hard. Uh, Git allows you to go, hmm, whole repo, I'll take that, make my changes, handle mergers, and then put them back. Uh, whereas previously there was lots of focus on trunk-based methodologies, and these can be unreliable. Now, uh, I say unreliable, but we've actually, in the Git world, kind of moved back towards trunk-based methodologies, so maybe they're not so bad. Uh, maybe they'll get the job done after all. I wanted to show you this. This is a source code visualization of the Linux kernel six weeks back in 2012, quite a while ago. So this is a, a visualization that's sort of going to show you uh, all the different sort of uh, files that are being changed. Yes, it's using Gauss. 
Uh, so you can see all the different files are being changed to a whole bunch of different contributors. This is just over a period of six weeks, and this is back in 2012. I can't help, I can't help but feel that maybe there's a few more back in now in 2018. You can see lots of different files being adjusted. Uh, I imagine there's a few merges going on there, the discussion between why this file is being changed, what bug is being fixed here, what issue, what feature, why are we doing all these things, and we need some sort of system to manage this. Whether that be Git, whether it be GitHub, so you have issues, whether it be Jira, so you've got tickets, whatever it may be, a lot of stuff happens here. This is six weeks. A lot of stuff happens. I had to speed it up a fair bit because it went for like 20 minutes. Um, so how do I Git? So now you know why we do it, why it's important, how do we do it? Our Git journey starts in one of two ways. One, we have a new project or we're not associated with Git, so we call Git init, make a new project. Or we have an existing project, we clone it from our re remote repo and it becomes, it is already a Git repository. Uh, either way, you're going to have a folder called .git in your, uh, in your root directory of your project and all your Git things are going to live in there. Delete that folder, you lose your local repo. So everything's in there. So you're going to have a local repository. Now, let's go through some scenarios of how you would use Git. Let's go with the most basic one. We're going to add a file. It's called newcontroller.swift. Yes, great naming convention. Newcontroller.swift, uh, and we've dragged it into the folder, or we've added it, or we've done something. We've added a new file to the directory. Git has no idea it exists. We dropped it in there. Git has no idea. It goes into our work directory, or our working tree. So there it goes, into there. If we want to let git know it exists, we need to add it. So we call git add, git add new controller.swift. This will move it not to the repo, but to a staging area. This is also called the index. So we'll move that into our staging area. If I want to commit it, so actually uh, sort of have it as part of our repository, I need to call commit with a message demonstrating bad class naming, new controller.swift. So that will add it to our local repository. Okay, that's the first scenario, adding a file. Let's look at the second one, changing something. If you change something, that also goes to your work directory. So here I have an existing controller, again, great name, um, uh, existing controller, and when I make a change, it already exists in the local repository because I'm making a change, and it exists in the work directory because that's where my changes have gone. Now, again, I add it to staging, so it goes into the staging area, and then I commit it so it goes into the local repository, so it sort of is kept in forever, okay? Those are our sort of our two basic ways of handling files, adding them and changing them. Uh, we can change, so we can commit multiple at once. We don't have to give the name, we just say, I want everything committed in staging. So we're gonna be doing this a lot. We're gonna have lots of different files, uh, we're going to add some, we're going to commit some. How do we know what's going on? Well, we use a phrase called git status. And so that will tell us exactly what's happening in my, uh, in my current local repository or my, sort of, my current uh, sort of uh, project. So the first one here you've got, okay, I've got a new file. It's B. It's being staged to commit. It's in the staging area. I've got a, a uh, change not staged, which is C. And I've got an untracked file A. Okay, so I've got these three files. Now, if I want to add from staging area, we've already done this before, we commit it, so it goes up there. Now, if I want, and this is the, the git status message, modified C, untracked file A. And if I want to add from the work directory to the local repository, uh, I can use dash A. Now, everyone thinks dash A means add, because they're like, you know, oh, I'm going to add this thing. Dash A means all. So you would think if it was all, uh, a and C would go up there, but what actually happens is that only C goes up. Why does that happen? <laughs> Dash all is all Git knows about. So it didn't know about A, so it only picks the all that it knows about, which is somewhat confusing, I imagine, if you're a new <laughs> Git person. So it doesn't know about this file you haven't tracked, it's not going to all it up there, you need to add it manually. Again. Git commit all will commit all files that have seen before, not new ones. This is how I, Git is so hard to learn. There's little things that are easy for us, but not easy when you're new. Here's a nice little diagram of this. So you've got a workspace here, our git add, move, remove will go to staging. If we commit it, it goes to local. Git commit A goes from workspace to local. If we want to reset, we can use those commands, we'll talk about those later. And when we're happy, we push it. 
All right, so we have a bit better understanding about local staging and work directory. I have one more point to make in this area though, which is that we have a file C here. This is a file C. Uh, I made some changes to it, and then I added it, so I put it in the staging area, and then I made some changes again. I have three versions of the same file, three snapshots of the same file in three different areas. This is a possibility in Git. This is why it's important to know that there are sort of three different areas. So changes will always go to the work directory. When you add it, it will go to the staging area. It will create a snapshot of it and put it in the staging area. And without dash A, uh, only the staging area goes up. Okay, this is the, the basics of uh, those three different uh, states. Now, over the course of your project, you're going to make lots of commits. I've made some good commits here. I added a settings page. Those are always awesome to write in iOS. Uh, I fixed a scrolling bug. Those are always nasty to fix. And then I released my code because uh, amazing. Well, no, I set the release number to one. I haven't released it yet. Um, so let's look at some of the key terms that are on here. So the first one is what are all these random number letters? This is known as a checksum or a hash. So what a checksum is, is it basically looks at the content of your file, kind of squishes it together to a 40 character string and says, this is your file. If it was a 40 character string, this is what I would write it as. Um, now you'll see it as either as a seven character string or a four character string, whatever it is, so long as it's unique across your project. And it will definitely be unique. I'm not gonna explain the math behind this, it's unique, it definitely is. What is master? Master is a branch. It is just a normal branch. It's nothing special about the word master. The only special thing about it is that everyone has one. And so we have a convention behind it, which is that anything on master should be deployable. If a new person comes into your organization, they should be able to pull from master and go, ooh, code, app, it works. Not, uh, oh, master, but like the three versions before because I was testing something. No, that's not how master works. Whatever's on master is deployable in any state. What is head? It's where you currently are in the repository, where you're looking, it's, it's your eyes, it's where you're looking. And the first mistake I see people use when they're using head, they'll go, hmm, uh, I made some mistakes here, I need to fix scrolling, but I need to go back to that. So let me do some Googling, I'll check out a uh, hash here, uh, and uh, uh, I'll check out to fix scrolling bug, and then I start making some changes and I can't do anything because I get this detached head and then I do other things and uh, weird stuff happens. Deta you familiar with detached head? It seems like a lot of people are familiar with detached head. So, um, uh, so Git will let you do it, but you'll come into problems. Uh, and so, again, you'll get something like this. Now, what you would want there is a branch, and the way to solve it is a branch. Uh, but when you're first doing this, you don't think, oh, I'm in a detached head. The way to solve it is with more complexity. Uh, so, so you usually end up with sort of, you end up throwing things away or hoping you had a time machine backup to solve this. Uh, so let's talk about branching. And I put branching in intermediate, because it's hard. The actual creating a branch is one line, but the rest of it's really difficult. So let's look at branching. So branches, merges, and remotes. So let's look at these things. Much of this topic is from the ProGit book. You should read it, it's amazing. So what is a branch? So understanding branches is the key to understanding Git to its efficiency. But before we understand a branch, we need to understand its roots. Lol, it's hilarious. <laughs> Come on guys, that was a great one. Ah, oh, so thank you. I, I'll always take applause. Um, so what is a commit? Well, before I say what is a commit, uh, Git itself is really dumb. I mean, it's amazing, it powers all the world's software, but it's kind of dumb. Uh, what makes it smart is you. Uh, remember that I mentioned that you had sort of a, a snapshot going into different environments, and this is important. Git doesn't look at a series of changes or differences, it is a series of snapshots. This is what made it better. So thing, older versions had uh, various deltas and various changes and tried to track that. That was really hard to manage. When we had Git, we had a series of snapshots. It's like Time Machine. You kind of look at the latest and you're like, oh, that's my entire operating system, I'll take that. Uh, or this date, I'll take that. It works exactly like that. Very useful being an Apple conference talking about this. So what is a commit? So a commit, we have a series of files. So I've got a, a readme, a license, and a, a test unit for Ruby. Uh, and uh, they're all sort of got their own little checksum. We've got a snapshot. The snapshot is, all right, I just want to put a point to these checksums. And I've got a commit, which again has its own checksum. 
uh, and it's like, all right, what, what, was the, what was the message and who wrote it? And uh, that's basically what your commit is. Now, uh, a commit tree is literally just things pointing at each other. All right, I'm a first commit, that's my snapshot. All right, I came from him and that's my snapshot. Uh, I came from him and that's my snapshot. That's really all a commit tree is. And not on my blockchains. Um, <laughs> so how do I see all these commits? Uh, we use something called git log. So how do we sort of see all these different changes? So uh, git log will look at the, the top of your head where you are and sort of just keep going backwards until you stop scrolling. Um, so you can see here what commit I'm up to, what happened, who did it, uh, its parent, its parent, etc. There's also one that people don't use a lot about, which is uh, ref log. And it actually is where have you, what have you been doing for the last 90 days? It's literally 90 days. What have you been doing for the last 90 days? And it doesn't just track head, it attracts, it, it looks at things like uh, uh, rebases and commits and mergers. It looks at a whole range of things with your repository. Reflog is something you really should be using. It's amazing. So again, what is a branch? Now that we've looked at all this, a branch is really simple. It is just uh, something that points to the commit. So here we go, we've got the, our, our thing here. So here's our snapshots. Master, uh, I'm with this one. It's literally what a branch is. If I want to make an, oh, and we've got head, which is I'm looking at master. Everyone's just pointing to each other on a tree. That's all that happens with trees. Um, so if I want to make a new branch, I say git branch. It makes a new one, it goes, oh, I also point here. Uh, and if I want to move it, move the head, then I check out to that branch. And then head moves. Now, this works, it's amazing. I recommend, and everyone's about to agree with me, this, which is check out dash B, because you create the branch and you check it out at the same time. The amount of times I've gotten this wrong is incredible. I highly recommend git check out dash B. Absolutely. So when do we create a branch? Now I know what, what they are. When do we do it? So if you've got a new feature, a new branch. Uh, a new issue, new branch. New bug, yeah, new branch. New production bug, hmm, new branch. New release, yeah, guess what? New branch. Uh, you will delete most of these branches. You'll branch them, you'll do some work, you'll merge them, and you delete them. That's the most lifestyle for most branches. There are some exceptions. You may have maintenance or release branches that you want to keep alive. So for example, let's say you're maintaining Swift 3 code, so your Swift 3 users, and Swift 4 code for your Swift 4 users. Like, you wouldn't want to delete the Swift 3 branch, because then you've lost all those customers and you, know, you have to force them to upgrade to Swift 4. So you, can, you may keep some branches alive if it makes sense. Now, common mistake. You focus on your code. You guys are great coders, you focused on it. You really want to make that new feature. And at some point you realize you're still on master. And you've made like 20 commits at this point. You're like, oh, you're committed to this thing. Um, uh, stuff it, who cares? Whoops, I need to go fix a bug or work on some other feature. Master is a mess. Also, do not Google image that. Uh, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's look at master is a mess, shall we? So here I have a really good visualization. Uh, so here is a visualization tool. I've made some commits already. I've got to release 1.0. I know you can't read that. I didn't att uh, account for the massive screen. Uh, so I've got a commit here. So I'm going to make some, some more commits because, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm making a new branch. Sorry, uh, what am I talking about? Git branch, feature cool. Yeah, feature cool. And then I'm going to make some new features on this branch. You ready? So I'm going to commit, uh, what am I doing? Uh, something cool. And then, and then I'm going to commit something else. Um, I don't know, so, uh, uh, a something nice. That was, see, I practiced this really well back this morning. Um, now, can someone tell me what I've done wrong? It's really obvious. Yell it out. Oh, I'm still a master. Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, so uh, obviously, at this point, you just sort of keep going until you, you, you release everything, right? No. Um, what we want to do is we want feature call to be at master, master to be at feature call. I don't think there's a git swap branch feature. That'd be nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to move feature call up and going to move that down to feature call. Now let's do that. So I'm going to check out to feature call branch. You'll see the head moves. So that's where I'm looking. And I'm going to move to master. Now how do I move there? Well, it turns out merge works really well. Now, if you're not used to Git, you're like, merge? I'm not merging crap. Why would I be merging to get this way? 
This is called a fast forward merch. Now, if you had a fast forward on a VHS DVD, this really is an ageist conference, isn't it? Uh, if you <laughs> fast forward on a YouTube clip, um, uh, you know, you're basically fast forward. This is still a merch. So a fast forward is still a merch. Uh, now I need to uh, move master back to the release 1.0 where I wanted it. Um, uh, there are two commands that might be useful here. Git revert and git reset. Hands up if you think git revert is a good idea for this uh, type of commit. I was really hoping half you would do it. But, uh, and then how about re git reset? Okay, yeah, all, right, all right. So you guys figured it out because I kind of gave away the answer. But let's, give, let, let's show it anyway. So if I choose git revert, which is the one that I would have picked because uh, I'm, I'm giving this talk. Um, so I'm going to git revert to this previous one. Uh, what that does is it doesn't actually revert crap. Well, it does, but it sort of takes the, uh, the one here and sort of puts it at the end of our, of our tree here. And that's not what we expected from a reverting function. Uh, so I'm just going to cheat here and just go undo. So what we wanted is git reset. C6, CA. I have reset back. Oh, what have I done there? <laughs> oh, there's always one. Uh, git, uh, what was I doing now? Git reset, C6, uh, AD. Cannot find C6 AD. Z A. Okay, so I've done that. So now what am I supposed to do? Am I going to make some more commits? If I need to, I need to, if I need to make some changes, I need to make a bug fix, do I make more commits? Of course I do. No, I make a branch. Uh, so git checkout dash B. I oh, know bug fix 88 because it's linked to the issue. And then I commit things and do stuff. So git uh, message and then uh, bug fix. Okay, so I made a bug fix. Now, while I was doing this, I actually really wanted the something cool. That's an amazing feature, that one. So I can do things like git cherry pick and go, oh, I really want that, that, uh, that change here. So 693. And I go, all right, I'll take that one and I'll put it there. Ah, that's nice. There's a bunch of really cool features. Once you understand how branches and visualization works, uh, you can also do some really nice things with Git. Uh, that'll do for now. Let's move on. So that was the master as a mess demo. Uh, so the, honest, the thing you need to do here is you should always make a branch, all right? Because otherwise you'll end up in this scenario, and, which I end find up, I mean, constantly. So merging. So let's talk about merging. So merging, some merges are easier than others. So how do we make them better? We need to find out what's going on. So we mentioned fast forward, just sort of goes forward. That's nice and easy to do. We've got a no fast forward, which is that you sort of make a new merge commit and then you sort of go, right, well, I don't want master to remember the six things that I did beforehand. I just want to sort of pretend that that was the last thing I did. Uh, I don't need to remember the history of this. So I do a no fast forward merge. We've got what's called a git rebase, which basically takes all the changes in a branch or up to a certain point uh, and replay them either onto another branch or onto itself. So here's an example of that. So you can see I've taken all those and I've just replayed them across there. No, it's not a bad feature. Now, git base is a solid strategy to use instead of merging. It makes sense. It, it's cheating a little bit, but uh, who cares? Uh, it, uh, but there's one thing I need you to really point out, and that is do not git rebase push code. I just, if there's one thing you take away from rebasing in this talk, do not git rebase push code. It's so important. It's bold. It's underlined. That dot is smaller than that dot because it's actually to scale. It's usually quite big. Uh, do not git rebase push code. Because other developers have used your code to base their commits on, and you've removed it. You monster. Uh, <laughs> all right? We don't do that. This is where Git rebase gets very bad and gets a very bad reputation. There are solutions. They're all terrible. The solution is do not Git rebase push code. All right, we're with that. OK, fantastic. Now, if you wanted to Git rebasing, there is an interactive mode, which is really useful. It's dash i. Uh, now, I've, uh, they've got an excellent interactive mode. It helps you squash commits, rewrite commit messages, reorder them. Uh, I've cheated and used a video here from YouTube. I love YouTube. It's great. I'm a millennial. Um, and so here you can see uh, there's two mistakes here. One which he's sort of committed one out of order, and he wants to sort of cheat and say, I pretend he did all in a row. Uh, and he's misspelled the word examples here. You can't do that. So he's uh, taken the commit before. 
that uh, where it failed, he uses re git rebase dash i with the commit hash, uh, which will come up eventually. And it goes, right, these are the different commits you want. OK, I want to pick this one, pick this one, pick this one. That's all by default. But he wants to rearrange that first one. He's going to cut and paste that one to the right spot in just a moment. And then uh, he wants to rewrite the, uh, the reword, sorry, the, the one that has the examples wrong. These are all currently set to pick. We can choose what type of commands. We can reword it, edit it, squash it, fix it, exec, whatever we want. So we're going to choose reword in this case. So uh, as soon as the video sort of speeds up and gets three word, fantastic. Uh, now this does drop you into Vi. If you're not comfortable with Vi, either get comfortable with it um, or I don't have a solution. Honestly, <laughs> uh, so use Xcode. It's really good. I don't know why you guys aren't using it. It's crazy. Um, so we're telling it to rewrite. We're going to save this. It's going to run git rebase on all these different things. It gets to this one and goes, oh, you wanted to reword this one. How would you like to reword it? And you, you, know, you spell it correctly. You save it. Goes through. And then he's going to show the git log and go, hey, these are all the things that you know, you've got it now perfectly. You, you re rewrote history in order to uh, sort of make it look like you did the right thing. And the last merge is recursive merge, which is the one that we're all dread to do, uh, which is we're sort of going to have a snapshot here, a snapshot here, and we're going to make this new commit and kind of hope nothing conflicts. Um, uh, it has multiple parents as well. Now, we do have merge conflicts from time to time, and I'm really sorry to tell you, there's no silver bullet. There's no silver bullet. You've just got two lines that they just can't, doesn't know which, which one to pick. But the best thing to know is that there are lots of different merge conflict tools to help you out. If you're not familiar with Vi, that's fine, because Vi is terrible for diffs. Use a GUI for that. Use Xcode. Use, I use Kaleidoscope, because I'm not fancy enough to use Vi for these things. Don't be afraid of them. Work out which is right and which is wrong for you. If you're not sure, you're frozen, you're freaking out, you hate Vi, what's a quit? Uh, there, we can just abort things. We can go git merge abort, gives us enough time to settle down, do some Googling, how do I merge, what's a, oh, it's a conflict, do that. So we've spoken about a few merge strategies. When do we do what? Now, when you're working out how you're going to use Git, do you want a comprehensive history and audit? Or do you want a sort of a general idea of how the project happened without worrying about every step? There's no wrong answer here. There's lots of debate, and it's a bit of a holy war. There's no wrong answer here, but this design decision affects how you work with Git. Uh, let's talk a little bit about remote repositories. Uh, there's a bunch of them there. Uh, we use it to store, share, collaborate code. Uh, there's a remote repository, you add it, uh, there is an uh, origin, you fetch and push from this origin, uh, although really most people would just pull from it, pull goes straight to the work directory, whereas a fetch goes to local. Uh, there is a hidden layer called a uh, stash, which you can uh, apply changes between your work directory and your stash here. We've got git stash and git stash apply to, to put it back up. Uh, I'm going to skip over remote and branches. It turns out I've only got a few minutes left because I really want to talk about uh, I really want to talk about uh, different flows. Give me a moment. I have got a few slides here. <laughs> so let's talk about organizing this crazy thing. So uh, there are there are lots of Git uh, ways of doing this. The three best methodologies are Git flow, Git hub flow, and Git lab flow. Git flow looks like this. There are uh, strategic reasons for having a branch and for what you do. So you have a develop branch uh, that allows you to uh, sort of develop on. You pull from your develop branch. You work on the different features. Uh, when you uh, uh, requ uh, merge them back in, you have code reviews. You have code reviews moving to release. Your QA team looks on the release branch. There are actual sort of strategies for dealing with this. Similar for GitHub flow, uh, which is basically create a feature, talk about it, and then push it back on the master. Uh, which is great for single version products. And Git Labflow, very similar, but how it sort of deploys is very different. Uh, and so uh, I would recommend looking to these three uh, methodologies and sort of to understand sort of where you want to go. Uh, which you want to do, it's up to you. Do some research on these three methodologies to help you understand how you're going to use Git. There are so many, so many more things I want to talk about. If you want to learn this, try.github.io has some great resources. Uh, if you've properly stuffed up, uh, there's a git choose your own adventure. It goes through all the different potential ways you went wrong. Uh, don't store your keys in your git repo. That's always bad. Uh, use issues. They are amazing. Learn how to write proper commit messages. There's actually a standard for writing commit messages. Here is that standard. If the one thing you want to take from this 
is you want to use this imperative mood. So if applied, this commit will what? This is how you write your commit messages. If applied, this commit will remove deprecated methods. That sentence makes sense, the rest do not. Uh, uh, learn about version numbers, learn how to use automation, don't push to master, use git ignore, so much to learn, pro git, uh, lots of takeaways, uh, 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 figure out your git strategy, feel comfortable, saving your code shouldn't be a hassle, shouldn't be a rush job. Follow me on Proxy Blue, follow me on Discord, follow me on, on Medium. That's my talk. Yeah.